What's up, guys? Um, welcome to part three of the Atlas Craftsman Lathe rebuild. So today I got to take apart the saddle, the cross slide. Um, let me show you what I'm working on here. All right, so this is all the components I still got to work on. But uh, whatever this guy was using it was it's like super gummy. Like the oil was just super gummy, so it was really hard to turn. Like even everything was just super gummed up. Nothing turns freely. So I'm gonna start taking the compound off, cross slide, take the apron apart. Um, the cool thing is it did come with extra half nuts, but those look pretty good. I mean, the, the lead screw looks perfect, the main lead screw. Um, all right, I'm gonna take this whole thing apart, ultrasonic clean everything, and uh, <clears throat> I gotta loosen this up a little bit. This is like super tight or super gummed up, one or the other. Um, or maybe this is just like a lock that unlock that thing here. All right, uh, I'm with the gib, I'm really loose. It's still really hard to turn. Yeah, this guy that I got the lathe from probably had it for. I mean, it looked like it had been rebuilt. Like I said, at some point, maybe. I think he had this thing for probably 67 years. I mean, he died with it, so um, got it from his son. And his son was probably in his 70s, you know. Um. All right, so getting that off, it's really tight. Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal with this stuff is, if it's, he used grease or oil or what. I mean, the whole thing is like uh, sticky. The gears were sticky. Um, I mean, I know that's just packed in chips, but a lot, lot of it, but like everything is really hard to spin. Like the oil is just either solidified or did something, I don't know, or put grease in it, or sticky oil, or what, tacky oil, or what, but, um, yeah, even just getting this thing off, is. I mean, I'm just, I had to put WD-40 on it just to free it up, even though I actually have the gib totally up, you know, totally, I mean, on there, all right, so I got the, uh, uh, compound stuff here, let's see, turn this on, Uh, just regular disc soap. I might go back and buff that thing out and get it all shiny again. Yeah, even with my other ultrasonic cleaning, I noticed that whatever oil that was on there, got caked out on there, it doesn't even come off with the ultrasonic cleaner. It's like I had to buff it off. It's so caked on there and dried on there. You know, the craft side is not as bad as the compound. Yeah, but I, have to, I pressure washed it. My first car was home, I pressure washed the whole thing. So. Alright, so I'm gonna move the apron from the saddle. Looks like just two Phillips. I wish I'd use cap head screws. Alright, looks like I'm gonna have to use my. There we go. Come on, I'm using the hammer. Okay, well, it's kind of loose. Alright, uh, separate that. I'm gonna try to keep them in sections, like I said. It's the way I don't lose. Even though I actually have a diagram of which goes to what, but. Here's another example of what I was talking about. It's just so mucked up, I can't even turn this stuff. You know, it just. I don't know. I mean, this stuff, I, I actually had to switch over to Easy Off. Just my, my, my purple degreaser wouldn't get it off, so I had to switch to Easy Off. And it's just so caked on. It's, it's just, well, I mean, it's, it just happens, you know? Stuff gets everywhere. Um, yeah, this stuff is super hard to move. Jeez, lots of play there. Well, I know this one's pretty has a lot of play in it too. Like this, uh, I mean, it's hard to know. But like I said, it was so stiff that you know it's amplifying all the play. Yeah, I think it's so stiff you can barely even mess with the crossfire auto, auto feed here. Yeah, the cool thing is, well, this one sucks because it has like this plunger pull out thing, you know. But the newer ones had like a like a handle, which is way better. That's how you can actually tell the age. Like the newer ones, like the after the 60s or 70s, um, actually had like the bar where you push down on the, on the lever. I got all the parts clean for the uh, saddle, cross slide, compound. It's all right here. Yeah, this stuff was so caked on. Like just cleaning this thing took me like 30 to 45 minutes. Like I had to go in there with my screwdriver. It's still not 100% clean. A couple spots I had to get. Um, like all this stuff is just so caked on with like 
like, I mean, even like, even oven, like oven cleaner wouldn't get it off. Ultrasonic clean it wouldn't get it off. Eventually, just had to scrape into it, you know. <laughs> All right, so I'm letting paint dry. Painted the parts, and uh, come back tomorrow to reassemble it. Yeah, just the next like, day, got all the parts separated in different sections. Let them dry it off, degreased them. All right, I'm gonna go back to the apron section right here. Get the tape off. I didn't paint the back just because it wasn't painted originally. So, one thing I noticed is that what I didn't see in the diagram and I thought was odd that I think I think I showed you earlier is like how that was loose. The crank, I don't know the crank, what it's called. So but I think uh, I originally showed you how that handle was all loose. I'm actually not a machinist by trade. Um, I'll just do this for fun. Um, so there's an oil hole that goes down through here. Right there, if you can see that in the light. Um, but there was this bush in here, so I don't think this is factory. There was a bush in there. I'm trying to figure out why there's so much play in the wheel. Um, if it's in here, I mean, I can see it. Yeah, I don't, I think, obviously it's not a factory, I don't think, because, I, mean, I guess if, eventually it might get in there, but, <clears throat> I don't know if I can put it in, I don't know, but then it's tight over here, too, um, tight on the shaft, but yes, yeah, so there was play in the thing, so, yeah, you can see it's kind of rounded out here, too, it's not even perfectly round, so either the bushing's not, I mean, it's not going to get any lubrication because it's covering the hole up. Um, so now I think I know what's up, because even in the, I have the dagger right in front of me, um, but, um, yeah, this was actually spinning in the hole like that, and because this thing is too tight to even spin on there, and this was like pushed on there, um, alright, so I'm gonna have to come back with this, um, I'm definitely gonna have to fix this before I put it back on. I mean, I do have a boring head. I could make this bigger. Um, you find a longer bu bushing? I don't know if this was, you'd custom cut this or what. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I have a lot of thread locker on some of these screws because, uh, like, when I was taking it apart, they, a lot of these things were just loose. So, blue blue the thread locker is not as bad as red. You can actually break this off by hand. Red is, man, it's much got to heat it up. Got to so work on the cross slide here and. Uh, put it back together. Paint's not perfect. I mean, it, I knew. It, I mean, I wasn't gonna make the paint perfect. Spent ten years getting the, uh, um, all the old paint off. Um, all right. So I noticed that there was there wasn't any set screws here. I mean, I can see that it's threaded, but the set screws are to cover up so debris doesn't get in there. You have to take the set screws off. It even says oil right here. But even in the, I don't know, in the picture did they show a set screw. They don't show a set screw. But right now they do show a set screw. Um, and then in other pictures I read videos I saw online, they were they were taking set screws out of here, so not sure. Yeah, I guess in the diagram they call it a headless screw. But I wish they had a line that went down in there so you could see it go into those holes. Plus those are obviously too big. I mean, but I don't know. I'm assuming that's what they mean. Cool. Found some set screws. Let me make sure it covered too. Well, this will go down further. All right, yeah, you don't want grime getting this. I mean, you're getting a hole in the bearings. I mean, you don't want to get uh, dirt and grease in there. It's gonna scuff those things up. Yeah, so those things were never even on there. So, all right, um, gonna oil this up. See that right there? I don't know. It's almost like this thing is not flat. The, the dial indicator right here. See right there? Yeah, that or the shaft is not straight, but the like the shaft is straight. So I'm only this going, is... yeah, I'm only going where things are challenging. So I think what's going on here is that when you enable the set screw to lock it in place, you know, for the backlash of the screw right here, it's the set screw is pushing this up like this. See, there's it's not threaded all the way down; it's only threaded in the first portion of it. So when you once you lock it down, it wants to move it. So maybe one day I'll make a new one of these, but the, actually the one off the compound is exactly the same. Uh, but it seems a lot straighter, you know. So let me put this on there. I'm like I said, I'm only going over things that are annoying here. 
So now this one's, see how much straighter this one is? Even though it's not perfect, but it's, you know? All right, so that's weird. So, yeah, I think it's just that the threads are loose in there, you know? Like they're just kind of worn out in here, so it kind of wants to wobble back and forth. Like as you put down the, <coughs> got the saddle back on. Mm -hmm. I might get some steel out of that. I let that on because it was too hard to get off. Yeah, switching those around. Like I'm gonna use the compound. I mean, this this right here a lot less uh, than the actual uh, cross slide. So, yeah. all right. So we're back at the apron. So this is the hole that originally this thing had come with on this side, and you can see it's a good fit. You know, nice snug fit. Um. So obviously this has been drilled out, and I actually found this sleeve. It's from a shock. And I guess I could do that at bronze. Um, not sure. So I might just take put this on my other lathe and maybe slightly cut it down to get it in there. But it fits on this thing perfectly right here. And you can then drill a hole maybe to get some oil in there, you know. Like push it in, like almost press it in there. But then give it some lube. You know, in here. I'm just going off parts I had in my old, uh, like, shock, it took like a shock bushing, or like one of those shock sleeves. So I, I turned down the inside and showed you a video of that part of it. And then I kind of cut this groove in right there. And there was already, it was already a split groove already. But I opened it up because I want to kind of see if I can crush it in there. But I, I mean, I want to use that groove as an oil separator for that thing right there. The oil groove, oil hole. Um, but because I want to get a little bit more tight on this thing here, because I can't, I don't have a drill bit. Um, it's, it's, it's about a half inch, so I'm hoping, because it's, I'm going to turn down the outside a little bit and punch it in there, and hoping it, by doing that, it's going to crush on this thing to make it get a really tight clearance. And this metal uh, should be softer than this metal right here. So I think this is, I'm not sure if it's hardened steel or not, but it's probably going to be harder than this material. Um, Alright, so I might probably just sand it down, maybe? Until I get to a point where I'm, like, right... It's, I mean, I want this to be, I don't want any, I'm trying to avoid play, <coughs> playing the, in the wheel, so. So I'm trying to be uh, very patient here, because I want this to be such a tight fit, you know, I want it to be perfect. So what I'm doing is, <coughs> I'm just tapping the sand a little bit. And I can see the crush. Um, and I can see that the gap opens up. The more that I actually do the outside, um, yeah, I'm taking this away so it's not as the diameters. Like I'm sure it's still tight. My, I love, we got a ways to go. But I'm just going slowly sanding this down with emery cloth until it's going to be perfect. All right, got the shaft in there. Um, <clears throat> it's not perfect, so I think I'm going to do some, pull a slight amount of, like, rubbing compound in there and just, uh, I guess it's been a good thing, I don't know. You can see that it's slightly egg-shaped from moving around. All right, this is awesome. No play in there. It's perfect. You saw a wobble. I'm sure you guys saw what wobbly this was. It was crazy wobbly when I first got it. I think in the first part of the video, it was crazy wobbly. <coughs> yeah, now it's perfectly tight and straight. It still needs to work in itself in a little bit, but. Alright. Now I gotta do the half nut, and I'm just kind of putting something back together. Like I said, here it is the <coughs> saddle and apron. Compound, all that stuff right there. What's funny is I didn't even know what a lot of this stuff was called before I started working on this lathe. I said I'm not a machinist. Like I didn't even know that was called a half nut. Um, <coughs> all right. Yeah, no play in that thing. Gets a good repair. Yeah, it was super wally before. All right, awesome. Stoked with that.
All right, so I gotta paint the tail stock. I've already cleaned it. I'm making a video about that. It's a pretty short video. But, uh, all right, making progress here. Still gotta adjust all the weights and stuff. You know? Oh, yeah. Like I said, I don't even know a lot of this stuff works. You know, I'm just. I'm, all right. So that's the automatic feed right there. Cool. Oh yeah, then I have the little thing, the threading dial. I've already cleaned it up though. Like I said, all this stuff was crazy stuck. It was just gummed up. It wouldn't even move. Alright. Awesome. Alright, so that's what, part three? Part two, I can't remember. Um, Alright guys, awesome.